If you wanna increase the organic reach of your Facebook page or your professional mode profile, then the first thing you wanna start doing is posting Facebook Reels. Tell us what you're looking at. What are the new social networks on the horizon? Facebook Reels, Reels on Facebook, not on Instagram. Incredible amount of free attention. There are over 140 billion Reels plays every single day across Facebook apps. That's Instagram and Facebook. And right now, Facebook Reels in particular is a blue ocean waiting for people to come in and saturate it and take over that space. Instagram has instituted real sharing from their platform to Facebook because of the low reels inventory on Facebook. Facebook natively does not have enough reels to entertain its viewers. And let me just share this so that you can understand just how badly Facebook wants people to post reels natively to Facebook. When you upload more than one image to Facebook, there's a good chance Facebook will make a recommendation to you. Do you want to turn this into a reel? When you upload an on-demand video to Facebook, there's also a good chance that Facebook is going to ask you, do you want to clip this video up into reels? And even when you finish your live video and you post it to your page or your profile, there is a very good chance that you're going to see a notification, a prompt that is going to ask you, do you want to create reels from this content? Because Facebook needs native reels. So any business page or professional or profile who's willing to come in and begin to invest their time and energy into Facebook reels natively is going to immediately see some organic reach increase not only from their reels, but also their other content on their page or profile where they use the strategies that I share in this video. I have another video that goes in great detail about Facebook's recommendation and discovery engine, so I won't do that here, but it's very important to understand that Facebook has changed. It is no longer the platform that it used to be two or three years ago, and now Facebook is becoming more of a recommendation engine like YouTube and TikTok because 20% of the content that people see in their feed is from people they do not follow. And this number is only going to increase as the year goes along because Facebook is trying to ensure that they remain competitive in a market where recommendation engines are thriving. And the social graph of only seeing content from friends and family is not necessarily going to make them the most money or help them maintain their relevance in today's society. If you open Facebook, go to your page or profile settings and scroll down, you're going to see a tab that says recommendation status. The first thing you should see is that your profile or page is recommendable. This means that Facebook has reviewed all of your content and it passes the bar that they've set for recommendations. Now, if you want to take part of this extreme opportunity to grow for free on Facebook, then you need to make sure your content is recommendable. That means that not only does your content need to comply with the community standards and the content policies and the partner monetization policies, but your content also needs to be wholesome and fresh. This is this is how Facebook explains it. Since they're recommending this content to people who did not request it or ask to follow these accounts, they want to make sure that the content is especially above board and free of conflict in troublesome situations. They want to make sure that the content is especially free of conflict and any type of negative user experience that could possibly be caused by recommending your content. They go on to explain that just because what you post is allowed to be posted on Facebook, that does not necessarily mean that your content meets the recommendation standard. Facebook understands that they are in a very competitive battle and they want to remain relevant. And so they want the best of the best content on Facebook. And I'm gonna tell you exactly what they look for when determining what is high quality content. But before Facebook actually points out good content, they try to point out bad content and get rid of it. And so they have a three phase strategy that they use called remove, reduce, and inform. And this is their strategy for removing that problematic content that we spoke about earlier or at the very least decreasing its reach and engagement. So if you want to get more reach on your reels and your other pieces of content, it's important that you understand Facebook's stance on problematic content and that you stay away from it and focus on high quality content. So what exactly is high quality content? People talk about it all the time. And what I'm going to share with you actually comes from my new ebook that I'm releasing this week, Meta's Rosetta Stone, revealing the secret reels ranking system because they have an entire system that they use for ranking reels and determining which reels are placed at the top of the reels feed on Instagram and Facebook and which reels are not. And they are very clear about what they're looking for and what they reject. But I want to share with you three principles of the many they have that determine whether your reel is going to rank or not. And I like to call this the 10 principle, T-E-N. The T stands for technical. When you upload a reel, 
Facebook system automatically breaks it down and starts looking at the actual video quality, the sound quality, the text on screen quality, is your background free of disturbances, and even the sound quality, as well as the centering of the person on the screen. Facebook system will score your reel based on each of these individual factors. The E stands for the emotional response because Facebook is going to go over your reel to determine what emotional response your reel is most likely to evoke. Is your reel going to make people happy? Is it going to make them laugh? Or is it going to make them afraid? And I don't know about you, but my feed is filled with Facebook reels that either make people laugh or feel inspired. Just a little hint right there. And one of the last things I want to share with you that they look for when you upload your Facebook reels that are going to help you get more organic reach and drive people to the other content on your page is the narrative quality of your reel. Facebook is actually scanning your reel to determine is there an intro? Is there a body? Is there a conclusion? Is there a resolution to the story? A payoff at the end that makes people feel satisfied from watching your reel. They are scoring the satisfaction level of people following along with the narrative quality of your story and making predictions about it. And there are a lot of other complex steps that they use to actually determine all of this stuff in your reels. And if you want to go in the most detail about the Facebook reels ranking system, I'll put a link right here where you can get a copy of the ebook. If we arm ourselves with this information, then before we press record, we should make sure that we have great sound quality, great video quality. We have an emotional response that we're actually trying to elicit. We're using music, images, and text on screen to make sure we elicit that emotion. And we also have a narrative that we've carefully planned out to make sure that it hits off just right with a satisfying resolution and conclusion at the end of the video. Because if we do so, that's going to give us our best chance of getting the reach that we want from our Facebook reels, getting more followers who are also going to consume our other posts, videos, and pieces of content. Because as you probably already know, you should definitely be posting daily on your Facebook page or profile. And I'm talking about posting all different types of content, not just posting reels, but also posting tech statuses and even stories. And occasionally going live and uploading on-demand videos. Because the more content we give Facebook and the more people engage with that content and like it, it's sending a strong signal to Facebook that we are committed to uploading quality content to the platform and they can trust our profiles with their viewers. HubSpot did a study where pages that had less than 10,000 profiles and that uploaded more than five to six times per day actually saw a decrease in their engagement, while people who had more than 10,000 followers and uploaded more than five times per day actually saw an increase in their engagement. And so there is something to be said about the number of times you can post on the new Facebook. I just spoke with a client who started posting 10 pieces of content every day. She has over the 10,000 followers we mentioned, and she's reached millions of people, gotten thousands of engagement, new followers, all from increasing the number of times she's posted. So make sure you take advantage of every format of content you can create on Facebook, because it's going to give your followers more opportunities to see you in the news feed, and also give you more opportunities to have your page or profile introduced to someone who doesn't follow you yet without paying for ads.